Has there been any shifts in the response of college administrators over the course of the year? Well, one thing that the Department of Education did that I think was a wake-up call for colleges and universities who weren't taking this sufficiently serious, and I will say that many have, and many have put in place new practices um, to respond and to and to try to prevent this from happening. But but prior to last year, there was unevenness in that response. The Department of Education made the decision to release the names of the colleges and universities that have civil rights claims pending against them. That got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be on that list. And so um, what we have found is an uptick in response from college and university uh, administrators. But then they're also, in addition to the pressure that we can put on through the Department of Education, they're receiving pressure from their students. They're receiving pressure from the alumni. Uh, we're, you know, we have engaged in the process that I described early on of the task force and bringing in a whole wide range group of stakeholders, including alumni associations, including the leadership of the fraternities, national associations, and they have, they understand the reputational risk as well as caring about the students. And so we've approached this as broadly and as holistically as possible. We've engaged academics that will help share the research that provide, that explains why this is such a priority, why this is an epidemic. I mean, I think about, you know, just think about the five women that you're closest to in life and the thought that one of those five would experience this while in, in college is a is an untenable thought. And so raising the awareness about the statistics is important and then engaging everybody on the ground uh, and, and making it a part of the school spirit. We have great PSAs that were done by colleges and universities where they're wearing T-shirts that say it's on us. So there are lots of creative ways um, that this can happen. And I, and, I, and I would say this as well. When you're talking about changing the culture, yes, the federal government needs to be involved. Yes, the administrators of the universities need to be involved. But culture means everybody has to buy into it. Uh, the tone is set by the students as well. And so one of the things that's been heart so heartening is to see the leadership on college campuses getting engaged, uh, both men and women. And when we first started the It's On Us, we wanted to make sure that this wasn't just women talking to other women. We need the men to understand the vital role that they can play um, as well in changing that culture. Uh, this is not a laughing matter. This is not something that you can say, okay, well, they just got drunk at a party and something happened. What happened was a crime. And I think changing the perception of, of um, sexual assault is as important as anything. And I think we're making progress on that front. Well, I think that what you mentioned about engaging men in the conversation is so crucially important. And I think what sets It's On Us apart, apart from so many other prevention uh, pro we've seen historically. Why do you think it was so important to engage men in this conversation? Well, because, and you said earlier on, this is not about victim blaming. This is not about saying, well, you know, someone so drank too much or she dressed a certain way. This is about saying that you have to have consent. And it's not an excuse to say somebody had a drink and therefore, you know, they had sex. That's not what the, we're talking about respecting one another, respecting um, people's ability to make their own decisions when they are able to make a decision. And if you're not able to make a decision, then that's a no. And so it's important to get men to buy into that as well. And they can put an enormous amount of peer pressure on their colleagues. So we did a great PSA where you sh it showed a young man sitting on a couch at a party and he observed um, another guy trying to take a woman who had clearly had too much to drink um, to have her stay at a party and go back in. And at the end of the PSA, the young man on the couch gets up off the couch to go and intervene, that could save a woman's life. It could certainly save her from what is a devastating experience. And so just men saying to another guy, that's not okay. What you're about to do is a crime, don't do it, can have a powerful impact. And we want people to feel empowered to intervene, to not say, well, that's not my problem. It is their problem. It's Absolutely. everybody's problem. 